So we're flying home from Vegas. I'm Austin, the porn coach, and randomly just started talking to Seth Peterson. Seth Peterson on the plane. I was in Vegas for CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, and Seth was here for the uh, Gavians, the Porn Award Show. Gavians. Which is, is that the, different from the Avians? The gay part of the Avians. Okay, so you're here for the Gavians. And uh, where you? where's home? Uh, I live in Phoenix right now. Cool. Me too. Uh, I'm originally from Southern California. Cool. Just make sure it's All right, so uh, 25 years old. Would you mind just telling me, like, how did you get into the yeah, industry? Yeah, sure. Um, so I... I went to college, uh, got my degree for, you know, just to be a good kid and make my mom happy. And, uh, you know, I, I was kind of interested in what I was studying, but I just didn't like my options once I graduated. Uh, I was living with my ex in LA in a two bedroom apartment with five people. Uh, so um, I thought I, maybe we should apply to this studio that I knew, um, thought I might be good at it, thought I'd enjoy it. Um, so far, I've been in the, with my studio for three years, uh, and yeah, it's been very profitable for me, and I enjoy what I do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, you, so you're kind of just living, living the life in LA, you got a bunch of roommates, and it's like time to do something different from a career standpoint. Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't living the life in LA. It was, it was crowded. Uh, I was not, didn't have, not have a lot of money. Uh, so I needed to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you've been doing it three years. Um, so I, I come from the lens. I, I had a pornography addiction and then sexual addiction. Okay. Which they are different, but very similar. Um, since I was about 10, 11 years old. And then I've, I've been married for almost 12 years now. I started cheating on my wife after I got married um, and confessed to her, came clean of that. I'm still married to the same woman, um, and I've been porn and sex addiction free for about five and a half years now, okay. and I'm still married to the, the love of my life, and it's been super cool. So my, my passion in life is really just helping men, typically men, sometimes women, who have a, an unwanted pornography and sexual and or sexual addi addiction yeah. issue. Now, I, with you, right, we're in very different parts of this boat, yeah. but I, yeah. stress the word unwanted, right? So if it's if it's not an unwanted thing, me right out of the gate, I'm like... Or unhealthy. Or, or unhealthy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I won't argue with you whether you think it's healthy or unhealthy or whatever, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. like, okay, um, I'm not going to try to convince you that it's, it's wrong or anything. Um, so... It's cool that we're sitting here, right? What was your first yeah. name again? Uh, Seth. Seth, cool. Um, what, um, I guess just here in, in Vegas at, at the AVN side of AVN, I know what AVN is, okay. but I really don't know a whole lot about it. So, okay. like, why, what do you do when you're here? So, um, it's kind of funny because um, my producer was telling me about the expo and how it always coincides with the tech expo yes. so you see all these nerdy tech guys with these big grins on their faces That's walking right. over to the it looks like me <laughs> <laughs> walking over to the avian expo you know mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i it was my first time at the expo and it's funny because my first day with my studio was three years ago and they brought me out to the award show the first day. The first day. They okay. picked me up from the airport in a limo, made it all special, and then they brought me to the freaking award show. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, the expo, though, was, was interesting. Um, the Gavy inside wasn't as crowded, uh, but um, I, I walked around, and, you know, there's Chatterbay has a booth, which is like a streaming service. I'm familiar. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, a room that specifies in toys and stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a way for for the uh, sex workers to promote their business. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I was nominated for seven awards this year, so I was pretty stoked about that. It was good publicity for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah, I don't know. Uh, other than that, it was pretty pretty chill. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I um I I right now I'm doing a whole dry January thing. Dry which, January. Yeah, like no drinking, no stuff or anything. Okay. Um, which was hard for the award show because that's where all the models are finally together in yeah. one place and partying it up. So. So dry from. Uh, from alcohol yeah, and yeah. sex? No, or, or not from just, sex, just, but I wasn't as probably promiscuous because I wasn't drinking. Got it. Uh, Have you tried Heineken Zero? To- uh, total side topic? No, no, uh, or like Man, Liquid Death or something. Well, no, Heineken, well, Liquid Death is water, right? Or do they have right, a non alcoholic It's like a carbonated water. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I, I don't drink, but I had a non alcoholic Heineken and it was amazing. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah so. It tastes good. It tastes real good. Um, okay, so. So cool. So that's what the, the show is. So there's also. Um, there are some sex toy products at CES as well. Um, because there is a little bit of a uh, bridge between the consumer electronics space. Right, like like the Love Sense stuff. Or yeah, the, there was one this year called the Handy, which is a manual stimulator for men. And then there was. Um, another like med tech wearable called the firm or stiff stiff bit or something like that interesting uh it's a device for men that you wear at night and and or can be used for pleasure but it gives you like all sorts of vital statistics on erectile health and all sorts of stuff that's kind of cool yeah it was interesting um right um how how long have you been homosexual um i mean i guess all my life i don't know how it works but i knew since i was like 12 13 probably Mm -hmm. 11 maybe yeah (laughs) yeah so so and then fast forward 10 years or so and now you're you're in the industry yes Um, yeah do you exclusively do homosexual or do you um yeah so i i'm 100 percent gay uh there was um, a model who won in the category best female to male, so they are transgender, and our the owner of our studio had mentioned that they wanted to maybe film a scene with our studio, and I thought he was a cute, kind of almost my type, but I've never been near a pussy, so, <laughs> so that would be interesting, I don't know, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so, but I would, I would be open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so one of my, you said 100% gay. One of my friends who's gay that I hadn't talked to since college, I ran into him and I was like, because I don't think he was out in college. And then I see him 15 years later and I sit down and I'm like, hey man, are you gay? Are you bi? Are you like, what are you? He's like, I'm so gay. <laughs> That's it. We're not being around the bush here. LOL. <laughs> LOL. Um, what, um, questions I have. Well, so, Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, would you say, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know, how, how do you feel towards sex workers as a recovering sex addict, I guess? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, because they're, they, I don't know, I feel, they're almost enabling people who might be afflicted, however, it's not their fault, so... I don't know. Yeah, I think, um, well, uh, towards all people, I just look at people as each person's got a soul. Ladies and, and gentlemen, may I have your attention one more time, please? If you need to use the restroom, please use only the restroom at the front of the aircraft. You heard that Both restrooms oh. in the back of the aircraft are currently not functioning. So, again, go to the forward restroom. Sorry for that interruption. <laughs> um, so, how do I feel towards sex workers? Well, part of my story is what I realize and what I believe to be true is that in the addiction and addiction recovery space, the, the substance, in this case, pornography isn't the issue, right? Alcohol isn't the issue, right. drugs aren't the issue. It's how you're dealing with life, right? So typically, people have some sort of pain or thing that they're avoiding dealing with and they turn to something that gives them a quick fix. Um, 
you, there's actually data that suggests that uh, pornography addiction is the hardest addiction to break, even more than drugs or alcohol. Um, I can see that. Yeah, and so for me, breaking the addiction was very difficult. Um, but I had to do a lot of deep inner healing work of why was I going to that addiction in the first place, which for me went back to childhood trauma that I experienced. And so in years of therapy and just self-discovery, I got to the root of that. Like, okay, why am I turning to this? And it was, it pieced all together. My mom died in a plane crash when I was five. So I'm five years old, boom, mom's gone. I didn't know how to deal with life, right? So I was born in 85, fast forward a few years, I got a computer in my room, I find porn, oh, this feels good, so yeah. now I'm hooked, yeah. right? So now in the addiction cycle, I was like, okay, I'm just addicted, that's, yeah, I don't like that, but what it really was, was I'm trying to run away from the pain of not really mourning or grieving the loss of my mother. Uh, now everybody has a story. Processing properly. Yeah, processing properly and, and getting help for that. So how do I view sex workers back to that question? Everyone's got a story. And so I've actually never talked to a, a, a sex worker. Before. Well, I actually would add that there's probably a lot of sex workers that are afflicted and addicted uh, sexually uh, as well. It just kind of goes with the... <laughs> 100%. Okay, so are you, are you implying... I wouldn't, a, I wouldn't say I am. I got it. Um, but... Oh, I could list a number of friends who I would think maybe they are. Um, have you ever seen the show Six Feet Under? I have not. Oh, it touches on sexual addiction in that a little bit, so I was curious. Yeah, no, I'll, I should check it out. Um, yeah, so everyone's got something going on. Now, I, I have seen content with people in the industry, uh, not... not Porn, but like interviews and there are some people who seem to just not have an issue with it and I would imagine that there are some people in the in the industry who do have an issue with it but maybe they don't know what else to do yeah so in that vein I just have compassion towards people and I strive to have compassion towards all people no matter what's going on because at the end of the day typically we all um, some aspect I think are wanting something more out of life that we don't know how to get and I like to try to just see the person for who they are and what they're really wanting rather than necessarily where they might be today okay. or differently put offering hope because at the peak of my addiction I was so stuck I had no hope for life even to the point of being suicidal it's like that's not a happy place to be but it, it is possible to get out of it and so for, for men who to typically I deal with men who are wanting to get out of it I just offer that hope of we can get out of it right on yeah right on yeah uh, I mean I don't know what the steps take in getting out of a sexual addiction it must be hard um, but uh, I don't know I don't know what else to kind of offer there <laughs> yeah, yeah no that's fine um, do you um would you say you struggle or have a, a sexual addiction? Um, well, I'd say, like, before I came out, you know, there's a lot of repressed sexuality. So the only way I could kind of release or express would be alone in my room, you know, with the computer. So it didn't feel like that was healthy. But it never became, never turned into an addiction, I think. Uh, once I came out, I feel like things kind of became healthier and balanced. And, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I'm also going through a breakup right now. So it's lowered my sexual drive a little. <laughs> uh, there was a couple a couple weeks ago uh, I didn't have hope for finding another relationship I was like maybe I'm just not even built for a relationship but uh, I was talking to a guy this week and thought like oh you know he seems mature a lot more mature than my ex maybe there's something that 
I can hope for in the future. <laughs> uh, um, no, but my my roommate, my roommate, uh, I won't name him, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but freaking man, he he will off for three hours at a time sometimes, um, and then he'll he'll sneak out in the middle of the night and then tell us the next morning that he some dude in our stairwell. And I'm like, huh, I could not, <laughs> I could never. <laughs> and that seems a little bit more maybe like, he's even mentioned like when we were watching Six, Six Feet Under, like, and they, they bring up the sexual addiction and stuff. He was kind of triggered, I think, a little bit. <laughs> so, well, yeah, there may, be, there may be something there for him. Um, I think, and he he has had trauma and stuff that I know about, and he's been to therapy and stuff. But you know, who knows where else there might need to be work done? Or yeah. Well, that's so. A couple things on that. The um, it's not uncommon in young men, even in the teenagers, to experience um, erectile dysfunction at a young age. From that, you know six hours at a time right. and not even ejaculating what that'll do to you right. um, and so that urge and impulse it's like a uh, it can be a, a roaring beast inside right um, and what pornography can do is have like an endless loop of that going on in your brain to where it's just that it's okay three four hours this isn't working now we're, now we're in the stairwell uh, yeah I don't know what's the, what it's got to do to your neural chemistry too. Like I studied neuroscience in college, and you know all the testosterone and endorphins that you're unnaturally getting from watching pornography for hours, and then how you maybe then perceive actual people when you're when you're there. Well, what it what it does is um, it it creates new neural pathways in your mind, and it kind of just screws up your pleasure circuitry and your impulse control also and that's where pornography addiction and or sexual addiction but pornography addiction can I mean it affects every aspect of your life pretty much because you you can get to the point where you just essentially can't make a good decision um, and right. like for in in a like for me in a monogamous relationship when I was cheating on my wife the amount of effort it takes to lie continuously to try to hide it, I mean, that that neuropathway yeah. gets hardwired in I as forgot, well. I forgot about how the the addiction circuitry works, too, and how it just hijacks your frontal lobe from right. making clear decisions. Yeah. Um, so how do, you, how do you feel about that as a sex as worker? As a sex worker. Yeah. I mean, I, I was kind of thinking about that when we started talking, and, um, you know, this is my job. And I know I make a lot of people happy, and and I've got fans who adore me, and uh, you know it's like you said, kind of not the substance that is the issue; it's the person's relationship with it. So you know, I don't I don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's, that's crazy we ended up sitting next to each other. That's crazy, man. <laughs> crazy. Um, trying to think of other questions, or if you even have any other questions for me. Um, so you just started this uh, Instagram page, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been doing, I guess, the sex addiction work? Yeah, so I've been, I've been clean for about five and a half years and really found that I have a, a passion for helping other people other people through it um, and I I think you know okay so how many how many people would sit and have this conversation with a, a gay porn star right I think part of my specialty really is like I can sit with anybody in whatever they're dealing with and not judge them and just see to their heart of what's what's going on on the inside that's awesome yeah and so with I think earlier you asked like about how do you even start if you're addicted, like figuring it out, I believe you have to first admit that you're addicted, or hit like some sort of rock bottom. Well, yeah, yeah. which they typically are yeah. coincided. Yeah, 
you know so when I first heard the addiction word I was like no I don't I don't want that word on me yeah but then I'm like well let's call a spade a spade right yeah in pornography addiction it can it doesn't necessarily need to be a daily thing or weekly or monthly right it could even be like a on again off again six month cycle okay. like a binge purge for six months or a year even and that, that would still be addiction so I just know the depths of it and most people just don't want to talk about it but I mean I showed you some of the videos on my page earlier like I'm just walking up to people on the strip hey what do you think about porn <laughs> right well it, so did you come out this weekend because oh wait no you said you are here for your expo yeah, I was here I was here for CES, but it was kind of like kind of perfect right, that it works. Yeah, with like the, yeah, yeah. So really, I was kind of just experimenting with what types of content could I get cool. for the the, the porn cool. coaching channel. Um, and since I've I've started it, I found a handful of other channels kind of doing a similar thing, which I think is great. You know, creating awareness around it, and the way I see it is we're all kind of working together um, to help people see that there's a bigger there's potentially a bigger vision for their life than getting stuck in the addiction cycle. And like I said, I mean, it's it's not a porn or sex issue. It's a how you how we deal with life well, issue. Well, it's, it's everybody watches porn, so it's like... That's not true. Well, I'd say 90-something percent of the population. <laughs> well, you're correct on that, okay? Uh-huh. So I always stop people when they say it's everyone, because yeah. I don't. Okay. Uh, but well, the, the right. data suggests it's basically like 97, 98 percent have some sort of issue that's why during covid our industry did not go down <laughs> views went up yeah views went up while well, people are stuck at home and, mm-hmm. um, i actually read um one of the big sites has like an annual report on the data and analytics around yeah. it which is fascinating to look at even like different it's a huge industry huge industry but different geographies of genres and flavors and who likes what oh, view yeah. time and that's duration. That's going to be really interesting. It is, yeah. 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 Um, so what, um, let's see, so you said you're going through a, a breakup. Sorry yeah. to hear that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's okay, and you, you, well, my question is, how do you deal with being in a relationship while you're doing what you're doing? Okay, that's a good question. Um, yeah, well, he well, he's in the industry as well, which makes things a little easier, um, or made things a little easier. Uh, he still was the jealous one, though. <laughs> uh, but I imagine if I were to enter another relationship where this person isn't in the industry as well, there'd have to be a lot more communication and boundaries and standing between each other so you know it's not an easy thing how long were you together um two and a half years it's a long time yeah it was so one of my since you started more significant yeah almost since I started yeah. Yeah. Wow. one of my more significant relationships for sure wow yeah. um, that that one has always fascinated me like how I don't understand how you can people, be in porn and then also have and also have a relationship too. like that doesn't compute for me yeah well and no, it's just a job at the end of the day it's it can be a fun job it can but it also can be a very boring monogamous or monotonous job mm-hmm. um, not monogamous not monogamous <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there was something I was gonna say earlier mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about COVID and stuff um, oh I'm not sure Um, I have other questions but I'll save them to the end because I don't necessarily want it to be right in the middle of this sure. um, where do you where do you um, oh here's, shoot. Some, here's, yeah, here's a little fun extra tidbit I, I brought my mom to the award show okay <laughs> uh, is she on the flight no let's get her over here <laughs> <laughs> right no um, so you know after when I started I wasn't about to, ready to tell my mom, obviously. Uh, and, but three years later, I'm making money and doing good for my, doing well for myself, and um, just we have, I guess, 
a better relationship now to where I felt like I could tell her. Um, so in th Thanksgiving, three months ago, I told her and uh, invited her to the award show and she came and got to meet my uh, bosses and uh, she was super supportive and everybody was just giving her all the compliments and it was a great time and she was super supportive. So mm -hmm. I couldn't have been happier having her here with mm -hmm. me. So, yeah. That's cool. Um, is how uh, is your is your dad in the picture? No, um, he was a very absent father growing up, and my parents got divorced when I was in middle school. I was just old enough to kind of pick custody, so I just chose my mom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you did you grow up in Phoenix? No, I grew up in Southern California. Okay. Yeah. Um, so your mom wasn't thrilled at first, but she came to the award show this year? You know, she actually had no uh, problem with it when I told her Thanksgiving. Mm. I feel like if I had told her maybe two years ago or when I had started, it would have been a different story. So she didn't know at all until... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I started, I did not tell her. Okay. I knew it wouldn't have gone over well, but uh, I waited until I, you know, had nice apartment and I was taking care of myself I've got money saved and mm -hmm. um, she doesn't have to worry about me mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah how long do you think um, you'll you'll do it or, or maybe differently put like what would kind of the average career look like um, well so you I, I like that you are doing what you're doing because you yourself struggled I'm right now and studying to be a personal trainer because um, I love the exercise and I also hurt my back earlier this year so mm -hmm. it's kind of like a passion to like help people train right and not injure themselves sort of like I did um, so yeah I don't know I, I definitely have a few more years I think in the industry I, I, I like doing it um, I'm making some decent money uh, but you know maybe five years from now Maybe I'll have enough money to put a payment down on a house or something. Maybe I'll have a different career uh, direction, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not a long-term thing. I'm, yeah, I'm so, you're, so you're not like, hey, this is like what I want to do in life forever, but yeah. it's like, it's good for now. Yeah. Personal training is cool. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I just started working out. Yeah, you look, you look, look big. Looks are <laughs> deceiving. <laughs> I hide it well. Um, so, cool. Um, what else? Hey, Seuss, what else? What else should, should we talk about? He's my director. He's sleeping. <laughs> um, oh, no, not the director sleeping. The director sleeping. He's the videographer, actually. That would, that would suck if that happened while we were, well, you, while I was working. You were doing something, yeah. <laughs> where do you, um, where do you uh, shoot when you... Um, so our studio is based in Vegas. Um, our producer and director are married, uh, and the owner has a house. And then the producer and director also have another big, like five bedroom house. So they'll put the boys up in there, and they'll use the rooms, to film there. So it's kind of convenient that way. So you go up there for a few days or something, and yep, shoot two scenes or whatever, mm -hmm. come back home. So like I've got my scenes for pay, I've got my OnlyFans, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Well, it's been very interesting, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no um, problem. This was uh, totally random. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I I think it's fascinating and and appreciate the conversation. I hope whoever watches this is interested. Um, do you do you have any? Well, we can talk <laughs> offline about whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope this is interesting for people. And um, yeah, this is Austin Hamilton, the porn coach, with Seth Peterson. Seth Peterson and. Uh, porn recovery coach sitting next to a gay male porn star <laughs> yes having a little chat on the flight home from right vegas on. <laughs> right on <laughs> anything else you want to say um no uh uh hope you guys enjoyed and, uh cool thanks for talking thanks man appreciate it yeah no problem all right